Today is Tuesday, August 21st, and no, it's not this week. It's next week. I will be at a bridal shower. No. <laughs> I've returned. I've returned, and the Tide Pods are gone, and we've got a martini glass of red pills. People don't like the red pills. No, it's it's a little cringy. <laughs> you think? Well, it's supposed to be a joke like the Tide Pods. Well, I've been, I've been told that using the word cringy is also cringy, so I don't know. I don't know what to believe anymore. Uh, I'm so disconnected from the youth of today. Do you not understand the red pill reference? It's the Matrix. Yeah. Oh, is that what you guys thought? Yeah. No, there's also a subreddit called R the Red Pill, which is like really. Krista, this is all tied together. You're the one who's out of touch here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of people that are out of touch, let's dive right into government, shall we? <laughs> uh, this one, uh, this is incredible. This is, do you think this industry, like they had a meeting before they talked about this, <laughs> do you think anybody raised their hand and they were like, hey guys, you realize we've been saying the opposite of this for like 20 years? Is anybody <laughs> concerned about that? Yeah, no. It's uh, Well, and I should say, it's also, it's hardware and government this episode. So we're going to get the government out of the way, then we're going to do hardware because, woo, hardware early in the week. This story is about ISPs saying they need government money in order to expand service in rural areas. But just for the for those for the viewers that are in the U.S., I'd like to go. I, I would. I, here's your engagement challenge: go to your telecommunications bill and find the line items that seem like they're government fees or taxes or like an FCC regulatory fee or whatever, and now be outraged by the next thing I'm going to tell you, which is the government no longer mandates that these communications organizations collect that money. That money is collected in order for them to upgrade their infrastructure. It used to go to something called the Universal Service Fund, which was what we used in the 1960s to roll out telephone service in rural areas. And the government was like, hey, you guys can just manage this yourself, right? And ISPs were like, that sounds great. Oh, we're going to need more money. And the real, the kicker here is that they have fought tooth and nail yeah. to not get the broadband to be labeled or classified as a utility and they even go so far as to fight municipalities you know, they, we talked last week they did Fist that, fights. That, that whole title two thing they did the uh they like surveyed who hates their isp the most the winner the number one most love isp surprisingly was a municipality run isp like i don't know if i don't know if it was even for profit but it, with that in mind this quote and I'm not going to read it because we read things on while we're doing this. It's actually terrible, but it's it's all they're arguing electric power, roads, natural gas. They're comparing themselves to utilities and saying, "Hey, you should give us more money, but don't don't let the city or the government do this job. No, 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 that won't do. Give us the money and we'll do it." I think that this. I think the Ars Technica writer didn't really dig deep enough here to go all the way back to the '96 Telecommunications Act. It was ages ago. Yeah, because. I, I, like, I don't think that it's necessarily the answer to turn it into government, you know, whatever. But I do think that if you give people the entrepreneurial capability to do interesting stuff in this space, you can make a lot of money selling network access. I promise. It is a just crazy profitable business. Well, that's what uh, last week we did that story. and they're tr So there is that rule that a smaller company can resell your bandwidth on your infrastructure at a government set rate. Except it's there's there's like a bunch of that was set up to be actually awesome in the ninety six telecommunications act, but almost none of it has teeth anymore. Well, but it does still exist. But now they're trying to get that completely removed. Yeah, they don't want that anymore. Yeah. So that's the one side of their mouth is saying that. The other side of their mouth is saying we're a utility. They look it, ridiculous when they try to talk. If you could imagine all of the uh, these rules as like a big game of Jenga. The rule that you're talking about is literally the last peg. Like when you when you pull that out, if the Jenga tower is going to remain, it's just going to be floating in midair. Yeah. So <laughs> how about we knock the whole tower down and start letting people compete? That might be something nice, huh? Is that a lead in for like knocking the tower down? Is that is that a euphemism for something as a lead in for our next uh, story? Because this one also had me blind with rage. <laughs> well, I don't. I mean, that's sort of like you're invoking kind of a 9-11 type of yeah, thing yeah. there. I'm, I'm not sure how that applies. <laughs> but yeah, everybody hates a Jeep pie. And I, how long has it been since we've had a week there wasn't in the Jeep pie story? It's been, it's been a while. Well, look, at, look at his smug face in this story. He like. is a staple 
of the level one news. Scroll down there and well, look let's at let's it. read the headline first before we scroll down. <laughs> Complete joke. Democrats have been ripped off for totally failing to grill the FCC chair Jeep Pie over a net neutrality cyber attack. So for those of you just Tune getting, in. getting clued into this, forever this guy's been saying that the uh the uh, the FCC was attacked by a denial of distributed denial of service attack, and that's why their their comment system was messed up. And there's identity theft and all kinds of in person, just all kinds of shenanigans. And then it turns out there wasn't when they were asked to produce evidence of that, cornered into producing actual evidence of that. And then they're like, "Oops, our bad. It was we our lied. IT guy." But more importantly, there was an oversight committee scheduled meeting right after that this, to ask about this what last happened. week. Yeah, so hey. Let's do an oversight committee meeting. Let's let's try and grill a Jeep pie over what went on. Exactly one person asked him about that episode, and it was kind of lackluster. <laughs> so they just let him get away. He blamed it on the chief information officer, who was an Obama appointee. So his press release was basically like, I'm excited to finally tell the truth that it wasn't my fault, and we can end the conspiracy <laughs> theories. I'm paraphrasing just a little bit, because th- he literally said... We can end the conspiracy theories that I was somehow cheating. We're living so, in the darkest timeline. What, I was just thinking, is like, what's the Star Trek timeline where like the Romulans took over the Federation Council really early on? Because this is that timeline. Well, you're really, <laughs> you're really saying some terrible things about the Romulans here. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's time for my favorite part of the news. And oh, what a week it has been. For Tesla. Now we're gonna, Here come the down votes. We're going we're to split this into two parts because it's kind of like a mixture between government and business news. But early in the week, we found out... Now, last week we talked about uh, there were some stirrings about this. But now it is for sure there is a subpoena over the funding secured tweet. Was that tweet wrong? Should I not have done that? Mm, There's no, Securities fraud. There, <laughs> we'll learn more about that in business because he's done some interviews and he's like, sorry, not sorry. So, yeah. But uh, he offered to take it private for 420. But if you look at the graph of the Tesla stocks, uh, as soon as the stock started to go back down again, he was like, no, the shorts will not have it. Because, you know, there's a lot of people making a lot of money from shorting Tesla. I meant to put, I actually meant to put the graph after the story. I was super late today. Uh, but yeah, if you look at the stock now, it went, it was, it was doing fine. It was cruising along and then the tweet and it went to like 380. Well, before the tweet, it shot up because of the earnings because the earnings were higher than expected. But I mean, it continued that meteoric rise. It got to 380 on the back of all that. Yeah. And then over the past week, a lot of weird things have happened. And I think it's at like, 305? Yeah. So imagine if you bought at 370. Mm. Mm, bad news. You know who's feeling good? Uh, David Einhorn. <laughs> Having a great week. He's probably like, you know, he's probably got a hooker of every hair color and ethnicity. <laughs> and they're all wearing those shorts that he got in the mail. <laughs> There's just a mountain of cocaine. All the shorts he got in the mail. So juicy on the boat. Oh, level one news. Woo! Uh, well, and don't let the Tesla fun stop there. We've got more Tesla stories. And Tesla, as we reported in the past, they love their subsidies. And they don't like it when you take them away. Uh, this is I feel like this is one where people were beating us up in the comments about this. Because we talked about subsidies in Germany and Canada and the U.S. and other places. And I feel like that there were a lot of people that were saying, no, 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 the, the, the situation in Canada is completely fine. Tesla is included, but this article would seem to say that no. And in fact, some Tesla customers are not getting their incentives. This is, uh, I can't remember, it's some kind of city or municipality or whatever. I don't know how the, the weird segregation of landmass go in Canada. I don't know what they call them. But uh, I think this Provinces. was the, the Rob Ford area. Yeah. The crack smoking mayor, if you're not, you, know, oh, you don't know yeah. about Rob Ford. Anyway, they had a $14,000 subsidy. They changed the rule. Now, it is a little weird how they did it. you got to give a little bit of leeway to Tesla here because they changed the rule to be 14000 for every electric vehicle that matched these certain criteria to $14,000 for every electric vehicle sold on a car lot mm. where oh. Teslas are not sold. Interesting. So was that big oil that did that? Yeah. That would be if, if anybody has any stories about you know like where's the investigative journalism? I need the investigative journalism where the journalist cracks open this you know um, egg. 
controversy by big oil type egg. <laughs> but we'll cover it if there's a story about it. So let us know. Uh, the so Tesla, what they're saying, they're they're suing, and the lawsuit, they're saying that they're being discriminated against. Although, I don't, is there anything in the rule set of government subsidies that says that they can't discriminate against whoever they want? I, as long as it's not a protected class, I'd imagine. EV drivers, are they the next protected class? <laughs> they're usually pretty well-to-do people, actually. Because well, yeah. they're expensive cars, so. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure we'll hear more about that, and we will gladly report it to you. Got a lot of news about encryption and governments behaving badly this week as well. And our our tour of governments behaving badly starts in Australia, which let's, is often the world's you know technolo- technological experiment place. <laughs> and then this experiment is, this is like you know the uh, the Nazi camp level of experimentation. <laughs> so we've talked a lot about uh, what's the, who's the guy in the the FBI that's always cr- crying out for backdoors. Oh yeah, I can't remember his name. Yeah. We shouldn't know his name. I'm glad I don't know his name. But he's basically always saying, hey, you have to give law enforcement, and law enforcement only, a back door. And, of course, that's impossible. <laughs> that's dividing by zero. <laughs> Demonstrates his lack of understanding of technology. Well, it seems that all of Australia also completely lacks that understanding because that's exactly what they're demanding. They're no, saying they're not that, demanding a back door. They're demanding a side gate. Yeah, literally they okay. refer to it as a side gate. <laughs> that's the most Australian thing I've ever heard. <laughs> So yeah, this is not. This is a proposed law that goes into debate uh, on the 13th. So it's already it's being debated until December, and then in the spring session they will vote on it. So if you're Australian, maybe you want to weigh in on that. I don't understand how we get into a situation where these kinds of things are are necessary. It's just not necessary to have this level of access in order to do good old-fashioned police work. Well, even if you could have it, even if you could have this and you could guarantee that only the government had access to it, there might be a problem with the government somehow, you know, just accidentally losing (laughs) that information and it getting into the wrong hands. (laughs) Oh, the open S3 buckets of the world. Now, this is actually talking about Trello, the Trello project management software. What better place to plan espionage than Trello? Well, it turns out they accidentally had those plans Exposed they, to the public internet. They accidentally the whole thing. <laughs> Literally the whole thing. The whole thing. <laughs> and Every plan. The researcher who managed to hack this Trello, how did he do it? Did he use advanced malware and, you know, it's like that movie level hacking where you've got the GUI on the screen and it shows a percentage bar and all that? It's two people typing on one keyboard. Exactly. No, he Googled it. He, he found it on Google. Because it was public already. Because they weren't using the pay for plan for Trello. Good job. This had... A lot of different, it had some code, it had a lot of different uh, cloud account passwords and stuff like that. It had like guidelines and overall meta planning for all the various things. It had things. comments where people were getting sassy with each other. Probably, <laughs> yeah. Trello is actually a really good planning software. I mean, it's really, it's getting kind of sort of popular. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Atlassian or one of those companies buys them. And ruins it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Wendell knows about some catty comments on project management because <laughs> he got to experience that on Friday. Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> it was the kind of comment where like, because we all get emailed at the same time and we all saw it and without even like consulting with him, it was just like, ooh. ooh. <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you going to take that? I just, I don't even care. Did you respond? I just want everybody to be happy. That's all I want. Well, you know what? Who else said, ooh, last week? Venezuelans. <laughs> And for a terrible reason, their currency got slaughtered. Yeah, this is so this is apparently tied to cryptocurrency now and the price of oil somehow. So they have we've talked about that cryptocurrency there. That was supposed to roll out really early in the year, wasn't it? Yeah, they never did manage to until now. At least they're claiming to now. But they had that like they had the official exchange rate and then they had the black market rate. And the official exchange rate was a joke. So basically what he did is he accepted the black market rate, cut all the zeros off of the currency, (laughs) and uh, made a new currency that is now tied to the cryptocurrency, which may or may not exist, which is tied to oil, which they can't afford to get out of the ground because they're broke. And if you're an American, you're not allowed to do business with Venezuela. That's actually bad. But the... I can't remember the numbers here. It is... 
an exchange rate of 6670079 of these new things to the US dollar. Wow. So $1 is worth 6.6 6 million, nearly 6.7 million of the new Venezuelan currency. I saw this uh, the situation in Venezuela is it's really bad and Oh, yeah. uh, I saw it put another way is that the average Venezuelan has lost like 40 pounds over the last two years. Oh, it's crazy. They're eating oh, the wow. flamingos. Yeah. Uh, he has also set a minimum wage. And that minimum wage converted to the dollar is $30 a month. Wow. Whew. The government is going to subsidize it for three months or six months. But then after that, nobody knows what's going to happen. And all the grocery stores and gas stations just didn't open because they're like, Everything we've got is worth more than you're going to give us for it. So why would we sell it to you? Hmm. Uh, it's, it's madness. Oh, terrible. Speaking of madness, the NSA has done terrible things to other people's <laughs> well, networks. Speaking of who Maduro is going to blame for this. <laughs> the NSA cracked open encrypted networks of Russian airlines, Al Jazeera, and other high potential targets. Which, is that really surprising to anybody? It is not. It's not new news. This happened in like 2006, I think. But it's been a while. we are now finding it's out through various documents that are becoming uh, unredacted and such. We're finding out that they were able to get into all these places because they cracked open VPN. Wow. That's surprising. Yeah. And they've a lot of those is like, how did the NSA get into this? Was this crazy malware? No, they might have just been in the VPNs all along. Turns out. Which is surprising. Yeah. I mean, after Shadow Brokers and Eternal Blue and all the other stuff, are we really that surprised? I mean, the, that was the, the era when those tools were being developed. <laughs> I saw one InfoSec researcher refer to, like, how do you know if a nation state is attacking you? And it's like you, you do the triage on the thing, and it's like the tools are incredibly sophisticated, but the operator of the tools appears to ba barely be literate, probably a nation state. <laughs> well, how do, you, <laughs> how do you know if the NSA or China is hacking you? Did the sun rise in the east? <laughs> Did it set in the west? And, if, and you know, we talk a lot about, and I, in fact, our next story, like the, you know, the, the Chinese wave of cyber hacking terror, you know, that's sort of the, in the news these but days. But they're so open about it. And it's true. I mean, yeah, China's always care. hacking, but clearly the NSA is too, you know, and they're, they got a big win in 2006. What are they doing now? We don't know. One thing we do know is that China is keeping an eye on their Muslims. With doves. Well, it was the, the drone story Pigeon. we did Pigeons. ages ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where they have drones that look like birds. Now, who knows how they're tracking them all kinds of ways, I'm sure. That's exciting. I want one. Where can you? I the, want, can, can I get a that from Alibaba? Or a drone? <laughs> <laughs> you can get it, but it comes with malware. <laughs> so, yeah, they have 22 to 25 million Muslims, which is just a tiny little fraction compared to how many people in There's like, like a, a whole ethnic group that's Muslim, I think, in the, uh, in the West. Well, when, when you dug yeah. into it, they're also tracking the uh, Tibetan Buddhists, and it's like, oh. And Protestant yeah, Christians. Protestant Christians. Can but confirm. As I think it's, it's mostly the that. Muslims because, you know, and. In Europe, there ha the Muslims, when they integrate into a society, it's uh, there's a lot of conflict because it's such a different way of living. And the Chinese are just like, no, we're not having it. <laughs> Track them and control them. <laughs> and so, yeah, they're using their pigeons. They're tracking all of their online stuff. And they don't make a great secret about it, like you say. It's just, hey, it's what we're going to do. Deal with it. I you know what else they're going to do? They're going to downvote your rights. <laughs> uh, but this is, there's not really much to this Quartz article. It just says users in China found Reddit to be blocked over the weekend. and That's it. The headline is, is the story. Yeah, access is slowly returning, but no one really knows why. There's not really any details. You know what I bet it was? I bet it was the release of that Winnie the Pooh movie. Oh, Christopher you Robin. Yeah. I heard that movie was really good. Because he hates Winnie the Pooh. Huh. Oh my gosh, what if it was? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. That's my favorite conspiracy theory so far. <laughs> I didn't even, I forgot that he hates Winnie the Pooh. That's hilarious. Yeah. Was that banned in China? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Any kind of reference to Winnie the Pooh is not cool in China. So you could, yeah. even Christopher Robin? Well, I mean, you know, that's by proxy. Right? Hmm. But he's so lovable. He does look like him a little bit. <laughs> I don't see it, but. This before you get that smug sense of that'll never happen stateside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, th we've talked about this story several times before, and I, this I, I actually thought maybe we should cut the story. But this story, the interesting thing about it 
So this is the story about there was a rash of robberies, and they just nine, I think they got robberies. everybody's location data from the cell towers. They got a warrant, and uh, Google actually wouldn't play ball with some of that stuff. I, you know, I saw a couple sources for this. This source, the specific wording, makes me think that Google did give them some data, but not as much data as as they actually asked for. They wanted there was an amended warrant. They wanted basically Google's entire marketing profile. Yeah. Which is everything about you. Names, addresses, your location history, a bunch of other stuff. Your favorite shops. But the criteria was not you were at all nine locations. It was that you were at two of the nine locations. Right. Which obviously would be insane overreach. So many false positives. But here's the crazy that. thing. Here's the, the big thing to take away from this Forbes article. They caught the guy, and yeah. he took a plea, so he admitted guilt. The FBI didn't stop demanding that data. They wanted the data five months after the case had been solved, and they had gotten a conviction. Woo. Which, like, how do you explain that? <laughs> uh, it's almost as if they want it for other reasons. If you work for Google, this might be your, uh, the, the, your poster child for, maybe we shouldn't collect that data in the first place. <laughs> oh, you're not going to stop them from doing that. <laughs> you're not going to stop people from wanting to work at Google either. That's, That's really true. good on your resume. Can, yeah. you, can you hash it somehow? Like, Can you take somebody's location data and hash it one way so that you can't produce the location history, but you could you know, inquire if they were at a particular location? But how, how do you sell that? How do you sell that data and make money from it? Uh, Google's got a lot of smart people. They can figure that out. <laughs> it's like the, They're uh, smart, but not salesmen, I would it's say. It's like the government backdoor thing. Yeah, you yeah. You can have it one way. It's the reverse of that. <laughs> well, how about Facebook? I was surprised to find out that Facebook Messenger is actually end-to-end -end encryption, and it's not stored. Or I mean, it's not you know stored unencrypted. So they don't actually ever have your... If you use Facebook Messenger, it's like WhatsApp. They can't see it at all. And the U.S. government, not a fan of that. Yeah. Uh, I, I took away two things from this. One, they need some kind of ability to intercept. This happened with Skype years ago. So, like, Skype used to have end-to-end -end encryption. And then when Microsoft bought it, one of the big things on the to-do list for Skype was making it so that they could do exactly this kind of wiretapping. But the second thing is the real-time aspect of this. It's not about getting a warrant for past conversations. It's as much about having real-time access without really any oversight from Facebook to these kinds of conversations, just like you do with the telephone system. I mean, if you believe that you've got to go through some rigmarole to get a phone tap, you're wrong. This is about one specific guy, at least at this point. There's an MS-13 gang member, and the FBI believes that he is using Facebook Messenger to communicate gang-related activity. So they want Facebook to set up a system such that only this guy gets snooped on. So they're like, oh, you can have your end-to-end -end encryption for everybody else, but not this guy. We demand that you give us this guy's communications. Remind me again how Ben Franklin communicated with the French. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, Facebook is fighting back, but you gotta wonder how long. Like, how much <laughs> pressure can they take from the government? How much money can they take from the government before they'll give that up? Yeah, and then, this is one of those situations where, you know, it's easy to be like, well, if the guy's in MS-13, he's a gang... Because that's Trump's favorite dead horse to beat on, you know, <laughs> it's like the, the immigration argument. I don't necessarily disagree. I mean, it'd be nice if we get rid of the, the horrible gangs from our country, but to give up encryption to get rid of them, eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> the cutting your nose off to spite your face? Yeah. or Or the medicine is worse than the disease? Well, are you a neat... I bet some of you are. Here's some bad Here come news. the upvotes. <laughs> well, I don't know about yeah. that. I don't think we're going to get upvotes for this story. Here's the bad news if you're a neat that drives. California is uh, admitting to using license plate readers to monitor welfare recipients. Now, I'd just like to point out how much easier would it be if California officials could just subpoena Google to track those neats. <laughs> That's true, because you know they got phones. <laughs> Everyone has to have a phone. Even homeless people have phones now. Like, it's just part of the, the cost of living now is, like, you this have to have a phone so people get hold of you. And this is a really dark future we're headed toward. And you've got to be aware of it if you're going to make any changes. I mean, is this what you want? If not, do something. So the idea is they've installed license plate readers uh, almost everywhere that you go now. They're on highways, mall parking lots, and all, just, you know, tons of places. Police cars have readers on the side of them so that when they cruise through parking lots, they're picking up. And these all go into image recognition, and they get 
into a searchable database. So I can pop in your license plate if I'm law enforcement, and it'll tell me everywhere that you've been, that a license plate reader has seen you. They, Gizmodo admits, no one has told them how tracking a license plate proves welfare fraud. And I don't understand how it would. <laughs> well, it's like, oh, they're, they've been seen in a bad neighborhood. It's like, well, they're on welfare. They probably live in that neighborhood. Like, <laughs> or, but what? I mean, where could you go that would prove that you're defrauding welfare? Like a nice restaurant or something? A known drug dealer's house, but it's like maybe they're buying drugs with their own cash. You don't know. This is their <laughs> third trip to the Olive Garden this week. <laughs> no one, no. Oh, they bought one of the uh, the unlimited. <laughs> they don't do that anymore. <laughs> the tour of Italy, which is like what twenty two dollars now. They got burned hard on that. <laughs> uh, well, we've talked about China and their relentless hacking, and the NSA and their relentless hacking. So what happens when we need to go into cyber war? Well, Trump has redefined the rules. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I don't know. It's like you hack us, we hack back. I don't know. It just seems very juvenile. Well, what's going on here is, so Obama set up some guidelines about when we go to cyber war. I don't know exactly what the rules of engagement were, but Trump is relaxing them. And the way he's doing that, he's saying that the military and the alphabet agencies should decide when we cyber attack. Hmm. That doesn't seem like that'll end badly. I, well, I mean, who decided before? That's the question. Uh, you know, there are some that say that the whole reason we have shadow brokers and that kind of thing is just a war of escalation between different, I don't want to say warring alphabet agencies in different countries, but alphabet agencies that have disagreements. It's like, hey, you, you open Pandora's box on our side. We had a gentleman's agreement not to do anything. We're going to release this stuff to the criminals and just sit back and watch the chaos. I can see that. It's kind of like a softball league between major tech companies. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, you wait till next year. <laughs> you just wait. But if it was the, you know, the lawmakers that were making the decision last time, I kind of think that a, a, a somewhat trained military cyber espionage group would have more knowledge about that than our lawmakers, for sure. It's it's like maybe it's like the softball league, and you know they're they're you know they're they're talking shit on the on the, uh, the 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 field, but then there's that one guy that's super pissed off, and he's just keying the crap out of everybody's Teslas in the parking lot, <laughs> like slashing the tires, and you know. No, just... you yell at the you yell at the ump. That's what you do in baseball. <laughs> well, they're, while they're yelling at the ump, their their Teslas are getting trashed in the parking lot. It's, it's sort of how that how that played out. So the, it was weird because everybody came out against this because it's a Trump policy. And that's what you do. Trump makes a <laughs> policy, you come out against it. That's just how it works these days. But the thing that they always cited was, what if we're spying on some of these organizations and then you cyber attack them and that disrupts our spying? <laughs> if only there was some way for all those departments to communicate with one another. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, you know... It is definitely the time of the hacker. And who is the most benevolent of all hackers? 4chan. It's the guy who hacks GTA and uses the minigun that spits out money and just <laughs> gives everybody money. That happened to me the other night. Don't tell Rockstar. Shh. Well, bad news for you and that guy. He's on the uh, endangered list. The, I like how cheat is in quotation marks here for this particular story. I mean, it technically is cheating when they spawn in money, but I like it's that, also fun. I like that there's a graph somebody made somewhere of how much money Take-Two Interactive was making before and after they introduced microtransactions and the rate of new game development. And so, like, with microtransactions, their revenue went way up, and then the rate of game production went way down. Well, here's the crazy thing. So, the, the story here is a judge has agreed to block the sale of the cheating hacking software somebody came up with for GTA. So someone is actually selling this that you can install and it's basically plug and play hacking for GTA. Take-Two has sued and gone into criminal actions against this guy and the judge says, okay, we're gonna block it pending the outcome of this case. But here's the crazy thing. Here's the thing that I do not agree with. They say it's cost them half a million dollars and I guarantee they're counting as if all that free minigun money had been funny money that they sold through their yeah. shark card nonsense. Yeah. Which and that no is, one's actually doing. I mean, Krista, is there any chance you would have purchased any of that free money 
with real dollars. No, no. I don't really play GTA that often. I, I was playing, and then a different game I was playing Overwatch, and a friend of mine was like, quick, get online. There's right. a hacker who's spawning in. Uh, <laughs> they're spawning in money, but they were also spawning in uh, a wildcats everywhere. So, like, the entire city was overrun with cats. <laughs> The, uh, you know, actually, uh, Barnacles got banned for a month, mistakenly, from Take-Two because he was having trouble. Like, he was playing with a group, and it was just a bunch of randos, and it was a mission, and one of the people on the mission must have been doing something is the, is the only thing he could come up with. Uh, and it wasn't even anything blatant like that, and they banned his account for a month because they thought it was associated with hacking, so I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people are getting swept up in, in, in this nonsense. Yeah, I've heard that just receiving that money could get you banned. Yeah, definitely. In, in a lot of cases, you can't do anything about it because yeah. They're, yeah. they're spawning you in. They're literally spraying they're you with a minigun. Right. They're, they're spawning in mountain lines as they fall from the sky while you're trying to run downtown. Turning you into a cow. They're yeah. literally bullets of money. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I'm not that good. I can't dodge all of those, those money bullets. Well, the way it was weird. So like this guy had the minigun and he was shooting, but it was like paper bags and they were just falling from the sky. And so the whole server was just lined up. It was like a weird shooting range. <laughs> <laughs> like the, everyone was just lined up and he was shooting everybody with the money. It was very weird. Uh, I drove a bus into it and he blew me up. Sad. <laughs> he didn't like it. Sad to say that those days might be over now. What Take Two actually did was just create a new weekend project for somebody to create new software that will do essentially the same thing. And you know who else has got a new weekend project? People who like to hack on electronics in the EU. <laughs> The EU aims to abolish planned obsolescence. Does that mean planned obsolescence is now obsolete? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just not as funny the second time. Hit, hit subscribe. <laughs> hit subscribe. We had to do that story twice because my phone made noise. <laughs> so, yeah, the, they want some sort of warning on the package about how long you can expect that product to work. So if the battery is going to be dead... In three years, they want that on the package. You know, I used to be I could I, could, I, I used to be of the mind that I could kind of see maybe maybe gluing this stuff all together maybe made sense in some ways, and you could just use a heat gun to take it apart. But after experiencing the LG G5, which has a removable battery, like you, there's a little clip, and you just squeeze the clip, and the bottom of the phone comes off, and you can slide the battery out, and it's just an, an empty cavity that contains a battery. That is a good user experience, and the, oh, yeah. the G5 is a tiny phone. I mean, it's it's not very much bigger than the original like iPhone 4, and Ooh. so uh, if they can do that, there is no reason that we should not have removable batteries. Yeah, absolutely none, and the the whole meme that the, the sealed-in battery makes it smaller, makes it better, no. no, it's just completely untrue. I don't think they'll stop them from doing that. I don't think this will go that far. I mean, it'd be kind of nice if it did. Well... I don't know. That might be overreach. Like if we're telling the company you have to make batteries this way, that could stifle things in the future. But I do like the idea of like, imagine if one product had a big red label on it that was like, warning, dead in five years. And then the other one had a big blue banner that was like, replaceable battery, good forever. You know, I think that would be a good solution to that problem. Yeah. But they're doing uh, several other things to support right to repair. And, you know, like things like Apple tries to do and a certain car company, as we'll learn about later, <laughs> they're in here. They're going to uh, outlaw those kinds of things. So that'll be interesting to see. Neat. Now, in, the, in weeks gone by, we've covered that Google was getting ready to roll out a Chinese tailored search engine. And by Chinese tailored, we mean that it's going to return cat pictures when you search for Tiananmen Square. <laughs> And no Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Not at all. Maybe they'll still have like images from the TV show and like the no. stuff, but it's just but it's just Winnie the Pooh has been no. photoshopped out. I don't think so. No. So, even, so wait, even Taker gets caught up in this badness? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's Listen, collateral damage. It's fine. That's the uh the friend that's of the, the price enemy. we pay. All right. <laughs> even poor Eeyore. And everybody knows. He, he was, was already depressed. He was already a communist. <laughs> so Google, I think they've got a big problem here. Because um uh, that, what was the, uh, the, the drone thing? Remember the drone thing? They were going to do uh, AI vision for drones. And the employees were like, no, we can't have it, SJW. <laughs> so Google has front-loaded its hiring practices to cater to this new wave of, I don't know what you call these people, trash. <laughs> and now every time they want to do some kind of big money-making scheme that's kind of evil, 
The employees get all in an uproar and stop it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Ars Technica's got this great article about an employee revolt talking about that Chinese search engine. So, yeah. Yeah, they believe that the Chinese regime is oppressive, and they're not wrong. Let's be, let's be yeah. fair. But they don't want Google to do any business with them because, you know, it's, it's evil. It's not right, even though it's insanely profitable. I think that... Uh, I think that the Google campus definitely needs more Ryans running around on it because I think that some of my hopeless idealism has sort of been tempered by the, well, if it's that way, why don't you look at this? And it's like, oh, oh yeah, it turns out the grass is not actually greener on the other side. And in fact, this patch here is dying of like root rot or something. And that's on my side. And I really need to work on stuff at home versus trying to fix things abroad by it. Not catering to search engine whatevers. Yeah, California's got some problems. <laughs> I mean, half of it's on fire right now, unfortunately. Uh, well, back to Facebook. I think we've entered into the hardware version. Yes. Have we? We've, yes. we've entered into hardware. The hardware so, section. We should change the uh, some background color or something. No, let's not do that. <laughs> so Facebook. Facebook's been making a lot of uh, extreme policies. You know, they're trying to keep their little ecosystem clean from all the evil and the latest victim the cody boxes <laughs> facebook's just throwing up their hands they're like we don't we don't know if this is if you're preloading it with pirated software or if it's legit we're just going to ban everything literally everybody trying to sell cody boxes which are of course totally legal and we've if you have if you don't know about these stories we've done a lot of these stories what happens is cody is a software that has a lot of plugins and add-ons just like your browser they can do terrible things, but it's sort of like Google Chrome doesn't pirate software, but you can sure as hell get some Google Chrome add-ons to help you pirate <laughs> software. Cody's the same way, but Facebook's just saying like, nah, they're just it's all gone. How long before Facebook bans ads for personal computers? That's true. The they ultimate piracy tool. Now. They have a whole marketplace where you can look at people's little junk. I've never seen a Cody box on there, and now I never will. Yeah, well, oh, if you do... Reported immediately. Oh, you can't Cause... actually report stuff too. There's like a big report button. Oh, yeah, Click yeah. on a yeah. submission. And then the team of blue hairs will descend <laughs> upon. It's like, the... this person's couch said it was from a smoke-free home, but it clearly smelled like smoke. That's a pearl clutch level seven. <laughs> a Facebook team deploys immediately to uh, assassinate that person. Well, last week we talked about the new Threadripper. I was surprised we didn't get more comments about those. Although, you know, most of the comments were just about us being drunk. So I think yeah. they might have been drowned out. <laughs> it was a weird, weird show. <laughs> but this week we have some more details about these. Yeah. Uh, Ian Kutras at Anatech did the most amazing set of benchmarks on Threadripper, the 32 core. Compared it with Epic and also the 2950. 16 core review. You should definitely check that out. A lot of interesting stuff. 32 cores, turns out there, there are some performance regressions depending on, on what you're running because not all those cores can directly access memory. But uh, And it also looks like Linux runs a little better than Windows, though I think that's probably down to binary differences between... It's not just Windows. I think that Windows is... I don't know. Maybe I'll get to take a look at it. Maybe not. We'll see. Well, not to be outdone, or maybe they are to be outdone, but <laughs> they have to try to put something out anyway, is Intel. And after the sad sad announcement that their new process, their 10 uh, nanometer... 10 nanometers delayed to 2020? Well, tw 2019 Q4. Thank you. <laughs> Not quite 2020. We get out of here with that fake news. But they are going to give us something in October, and it's going to be their new uh, non-hyper-threaded thing. And then the i9 is still going to have 16 cores. Doesn't seem that exciting. I think probably... You don't what, sound excited. Eight, eight cores, 16 threads. Oh, that's right. Uh, but the i7 will be... Eight threads. Yeah. So they're they're sort of... I think what they're trying to do is they're like, you know what we've got? The one thing that we've got, we've got that single-threaded performance. Yeah. So let's just hang ev not only our hats, but our jackets and our belt and our pants and our, our everything. We're hanging everything on do that same hook. Do they take the, the belt off the pants and then hang it up No, they're just... It's like this <laughs> weird... It's they, like Mr. Magoo. On they it. take the belt off. They tie it into <laughs> a noose shape. And, <laughs> I mean, from a business point of view, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, of course. There's a lot of rumors about this processor, so we're probably not going to report on all the rumors, but I do have to think that this most recent spate of rumors, the, the timing is sort of weird with the whole, you know, AMD, Threadripper, whatever. But one of the interesting rumors from this is that they're actually going to solder the integrated heat spreader because 
I mean, the six core already puts out an insane amount of heat. So you can imagine two more cores is just going to be, it's not good. Well, the pessimists might say that that October launch is going to be a bit of a flop. But you know what's a lot of a flop? <laughs> NVIDIA's new touring cards. Woo! This is the Quadro RTX 16 teraflops real-time ray tracing. So ray tracing is a different way of rendering things and that's a whole other conversation that we can't really get into here but what we talked about we had a story about this it's been a while back but the it, they believe that the, the future of gaming is literally simulating light I and mean, that's the simplest way to put it yeah ray tracing is simulating light to create graphics and it's incredible yeah it's like super realistic all the problems that you have with like shadows and polygon calling and all that all that just goes away with ray tracing but ray tracing is insanely computationally intensive and this week is gamescom so expect a lot more news that we'll cover next week from the gamescom stuff with nvidia because nvidia invited a lot of the tech press to go to this you know gamescom week-long orgy of game development whatever and uh it's i'm sure that there's going to be if there's a gaming part to be had out of that it's going to be announced there those cards are not cheap <laughs> Very expensive. It was three six and ten thousand dollars. It's yeah. like three six nine. Ah, I'll just round up to ten <laughs> because because Nvidia. But nothing. I wonder, like, once Very they w games will have to start switching over to that ray tracing stuff. Is there going to be sort of a chasm that leaves a lot of the older cards behind? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our games company is going to be willing to take that risk. I, where I would bet that it's going to be two generations. So I think they'll have the the RTX and the other thing. I accidentally switched the same. <laughs> That's fine. So. The next story, if you uh, paused it or you have, you know, that photographic memory, <laughs> has to do with iOS. They made a bit of a blunder. Uh, it turns out that they made the phones run, like, really just bad. They talked about 10 seconds to open an app. Wow. <laughs> so at that point, I might as well just get up and go to my desktop computer. <laughs> so how did you catch that? How did you, or how did you not catch that in testing? Like, how many devices? Did... They didn't test. It's not like... When you're, you know, testing a, a piece of software and you're like, all right, let's test it on the Safari on the iPhone. Let's test it on the Samsung and let's test it on the desktop. And let's do an emulator. No, they literally only have to test on one device. One device, yeah. I think part of it might be that it's, uh, unless you're running your own software in Xcode, you don't really get a lot of software in the simulator to like run and test stuff. I'd love to be able to install third party apps in the simulator, but it turns out that Apple frowns on that. Yeah, that will make it easy. Because then you can cheat at uh, Pokemon yeah. Go. Yeah, do a lot of stuff. How that pathetic stuff? is that? People did <laughs> that. At yeah, people. Go. So they could change the uh, the location. Yeah, through GP, like, like spoof the GPS, and then what? get those rare Pokemons. And and do what? Show their friends like, hey, look what yeah. I found by the library. Oh well, wait, they what, probably don't have any friends. What do you do with What do you do with them when you get them the regular way? Uh, yeah, you know, I never really. You know what? Let's just be honest. I didn't really understand the Pokemon Go thing. Maybe I'm getting old. Ah, uh, well, it's bad news for Intel, isn't it? That Threadrippers come out and Intel they don't have much to offer in October, and how they were feeling bad, but now they might be feeling a little worse. Because guess what? <laughs> Player three. <laughs> Player three has entered the game. <laughs> Think maybe there's some blood in the water and the sharks are circling. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> The blood is blue. So ARM, ARM released a roadmap, which is uncharacteristic for ARM. And in that roadmap, they're showing that ARM processors are going to be performance and power consumption competitive with x86. So you could have an ARM-based laptop, theoretically. But that will not include x86 emulation. You will have to have software that is native to get that kind of performance. But that eh, still sounds pretty good. Of course, ARM, you know, they'd mostly do mobile type stuff. That's their world. But they're saying, hey, we're getting in the desktop market. Who's going to stop us? Yeah. And, and there are some ARM things out there that will emulate x86. That was a project project Microsoft was working on. But time will tell how that actually shakes out. Does ARM have a, uh, a brand color? What color? What team are they? No, it's it, they just license their IP. So oh, that's sort right. Of, yeah. They need to they're probably working on internal branding right now. Step one, ARM. Pick a color. <laughs> Because we, we have to simplify There's this. no other choice. It wasn't Transmeta purple. I can't remember. There's no other choice. There's lots of other choices. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally trillions. <laughs> well, it can't be slightly green or slightly red or slightly blue. Orange would be good because it's... Orange would be very different. Combination. Well, this 
maybe one of my favorite stories this week because <laughs> as we've talked about, the Tesla defenders, my God, they are rabid. <laughs> they are insane. They will accept that Musk does nothing wrong. And, I, you know, I kind of get it because Musk, you know, he's like this idealist and he has all these high minded. He's going to get us into space. There's something he's, charming about him. I, I mean, I understand. He's going to get us to electric vehicles, going to save the planet and the environment. And he would never stand in the way of human rights or, you know, all these wonderful things. The right to repair, for example. Oh, wait. <laughs> Fast Company says that the Tesla, the company, is not happy that this guy has repaired nearly 400 salvaged cars. More importantly, right to repair, and you know, we've talked a lot about right to repair, mostly about Apple. And those laws, those right to repair laws, were all basically written about cars. Yeah. Like that's the whole point of right to repair. That's how those came about. So there are laws very specifically saying if you sell a car, you must give out this information. And guess who's not doing that? <laughs> totally against the law. But guess who will not give up all the specifications? It's it, Tesla. It starts it's with a T. T. <laughs> Today's letter is T. So this guy is, you know, very slowly hacking into the wrecked Teslas and figuring it all out. And he's actually got a bunch of them running, which is impressive. So he has rooted the Tesla. He is a consultant and he teaches people how to repair the Teslas, which is amazing. Okay, now let's let's do a, a, a level one quiz. Are you ready? Yep. Which of these phones is an iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> I saw this post the other day, actually. Someone else was talking about it, and I was like, oh, that is uh, pretty. They look awfully similar. Now, I think I do see a difference. For example, the red is on the right over here, and it's on I mean, the it's, left it's over here. It's not technically the exact same image, but it does look There's very There's no similar. yellow. There's no yellow. Well, it turns out... This one is a Motorola. The one on the right is a Motorola, but gosh, it sure looks similar, doesn't it? Wait, the one on the right is an iPhone. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Scroll down. Look, we don't even know. Oh yeah, because these Asian characters. This because it's only sold in China. You're right. Yeah, those are those are Android. Their, their background's actually a little nicer. I like it a little more. <laughs> <laughs> it like was so good. We can't even tell. <laughs> so yeah, this is just the most shameless iPhone. People have been copying the iPhone for decades but the this is the most well it's not been around for decades has it what are the iphone 2009 it's going to be a 10 year anniversary next year wow uh Ugh. but this is the most shameless ripoff ever and yeah. uh, motorola yeah. is is behind this they're only going to sell it in china where people like the iphone is way more of a status symbol in china <laughs> it's and a this, status symbol here too i mean let's be honest it this, is a little bit this is going to be 350 dollars less so you can get the iphone or you can get something that looks Exactly. Oh, they got a picture of the back on here too. Let's they have the notch as well, like the new top notch thing. Look at that. <laughs> Just get you a little Apple sticker. <laughs> Call even it the, a day. Even the camera's nearly identical. Uh, the controls are a little bit different, but who's going to notice that? It would be amazing if the cases were compatible. That would be awesome. Yeah. Get yourself <laughs> a nice phone case and nobody's going to know the difference. So congratulations, Motorola slash Lenovo. That was a brilliant tactic. Maybe a little nasty. <laughs> well, kind of cool. That's part of the part of the job. I'm genuinely excited for our next story because I've had as, as someone who has had to support people who use Android devices and have hearing aids, it is garbage on Android. But this, on iPhones, it works great. This is a cool story. So if you have hearing aids, they can inter integrate with your phone. And here's my question about this, just as an aside. I imagine hearing aids, because they're quite expensive, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The speakers in those things have to be really amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So would you get really, really good like music reproduction from a hearing aid? No, because your hearing is so damaged that like it's it's super it's weird. It's like super it's messed up. Because your your hearing's damaged, so the hearing aids give you like we'll do frequency shift from the frequencies that you can't hear to other frequencies you can hear. So uh, I see. You're, you're just you're it's 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 not like a volume problem, it's just well, I mean, it might be. It depends on your particular whatever. But, you know, a, a, another interesting aside, in the U.S., the best place to get hearing aids is Costco. Is it? Yeah. Why? Uh, they have... Uh, hearing, they bargain? Hearing aids are fairly sophisticated technological devices at this point. 
and people like the doctors that, that give you the prescription and stuff like that, they don't have time to deal with the intricacies, the technical inter intricacies of programming your hearing aids correctly and blah, 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 because, you know, it's, it's all use, useful for your whatever your particular kind of hearing loss is. And so Costco sells those hearing aids, but their people are trained by the manufacturer. And so you will have a better experience buying your hearing aids from Costco than you will from like your doctor's office or whatever. I mean, you should still go see your doctor for hearing aid problems. But. Oh, I'd like to inject that that's empirical evidence. Level one does not give medical <laughs> advice. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. Somebody in the comments that has done this, let me know because that would be an, maybe that would be, that might be an interesting level one video. It's like level one, level one geriatric edition. None of us have hearing spend. aid issues though. We'd have to like find a, a model. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. we could find people. No problem. Yeah. Well, if you bought Tesla at uh, 380, you're feeling bad. But also you might not have thought about this. What if you just bought? An SSD. Yeah. Uh, the tech spot says analysts say that we're headed for a flash memory price crash. Mostly because they've got quad level cells now. So more data in less silicon. Probably some reduced reliability there. Number of writes and that sort of thing. But Intel is straight up selling one of the first devices that use quad level cells. One terabyte for less than $200 US. So yeah. If you're looking at... Uh well, actually, you know what? That goes hand in hand. Let's go ahead and introduce our next story, which is the cryptocurrency miners are tapping straight out. <laughs> We're so done here. I think it's going to be probably an amazing, I, I don't know if it'll happen by Christmas, but maybe if you can hold out till 2019, a fine year for building a new computer. I think uh, if you see a 1080 Ti for like five, $600 now, I would jump on it now because... Uh, I've seen new and like new 1080 Ti's for 600 bucks, 550, 600, something like that. I've seen 1070s for 350, 300. So yeah. yeah. So Nvidia is admitting that they're not seeing the crypto sales anymore. It's yeah. over. The yeah. wave has crested. I the most interesting thing in this article was that Nvidia said, yeah, we are we we correctly pegged it because they had a peak demand of like 289 million dollars worth of graphics cards in one quarter. And they're like, well, we think in this in this one quarter we're going to have a hundred million dollars of graphics card sales thanks to the cryptocurrency markets. It was like six or seven million, not a hundred million. So Ooh. like they were past going like from three hundred million to a hundred million. It was what they. It was like three hundred million to seven. Ouch. Yeah, I think we got an article coming up in the business section. It was a, a tough week for cryptocurrencies. Yeah, not just in Venezuela. Yeah, but everywhere, cryptocurrencies took a bit of a hit this week, and sort of I think it's gone on long enough. It's been enough of a, a slump that people are just like, I'm giving up. I'm getting out of the business. I'm not buying anymore. The business. Yeah. The, the mining. But I'm, I'm hanging up my miner's hat. <laughs> Going back into the sun. <laughs> Good uh, God, we've rambled on for an hour. Well, we've really got, we got one more story. One last story. And uh, I don't know. I think this is a lot. They're doing a lot of speculating here. <laughs> there is no stretch. proof to yeah. this. R says that Valve seems to be working on tools to get Windows games running on Linux. Files hint at Steam Play compatibility. So I'm going to take this moment to plug the Level 1 content on the Linux channel. We've got our two-part series. We did that collab with Linus. We've got a full guide on getting up and running with native gaming on Linux. And now also with Wine and Lutris, which might be what Valve is planning. But they admit yeah. you're going to suffer pretty, pretty significant losses of performance if you play on Linux. That's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah it's not like I'm going to go for a hike. It's like I'm going to go climb Mount Everest. There's, it's rewarding to climb Mount Everest, but it is treacherous. There's also a lot of dead people on Mount Everest. It's also <laughs> covered in poop. I mean, but I mean, even if you get, even you get to the peak, it's not going to be as good as if you climb that other mountain. Even yeah. though that other mountain has a lot more corpses and trash on it. <laughs> The other mountain is like a resort. Like there's there's girls in bikinis. It costs on the way a lot up. more. <laughs> yeah, but you have to tip everybody. Yeah, you have to tip your Sherpas every step on the <laughs> other one. But yeah, yeah, you can. They're not wrong. You can you can use these tools to game on Linux. You can also cut vegetables with a credit card. <laughs> Possible, maybe not the best experience. <laughs> well, I'm having a good time over on the Linux channel. <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> 